Lads, 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 ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the Chef United way in good nick. It's absolutely brilliant to be here because, you know, it might not be great on the pitch, but we can still talk to opposition fans, find out as much as we can about the teams that we're playing in the Premier League. And you just never know, it might be the last season for a while that we can do that. So <laughs> I'm very pleased to say from Carefree Lewis G, a Chelsea fan channel, we welcome Lewis. Lewis, how would you like me to address you as we go on? Uh, Lewis is calm, honestly. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. It's a great name that you've got, Carefree Lewis. So it's just it was. I only did it because I knew it could rhyme with with the G in my surname because my surname is so long. If I type that as a YouTube as a YouTube name, no one's going to search for me. I mean, are you going to dare tell us what it is? Oh, Gabriel Selassie. Good luck pronouncing it. Brilliant name. And there was a footballer called uh, Gabriel Selassie, I believe. Yeah, Werder Bremen. Mm. Everyone always talks back to him or highly Gabriel Selassie. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's a, that's a wonderful surname. Well, it's, it's a pleasure having you on the channel. Thank you for giving up this time. You're big in the game. A lot of followers. You do quite a bit. Do you want to just let those who aren't familiar with you know a little bit about you? Um, I've just been around in the fan channel industry for a couple of years. What did a couple, did a, uh, uh, a few years work on 100% Chelsea on a new channel now, Blues Fans TV. So yeah, if you guys want to subscribe, massively appreciated. Uh, yeah, I've just been doing YouTube videos the last few years. I just did it because I like the idea of vlogging. I like the idea of a fan channel where you could talk about games and get to chat to other people about games and you all start to connect. Like the amount of people I've met doing fan media mm. who support different sorts of clubs all over the world, let alone England. It's amazing. And like this is the whole reason why I've wanted to get involved in it. It connects you more with football fans and more Chelsea fans. I uh, get to go to Chelsea sometimes. Well, back when we could all go to watch football, uh, I've got some really good friends that uh, support Chelsea as season ticket holders. Uh, the Matthew Harding Upper is is where I've frequented whenever Sheffield United aren't playing. So, uh, I mean, I don't really want to say I've got a soft spot for Chelsea because this is the wrong time to say that. But uh, uh -huh. just, just between you and me, I've got a bit of a soft spot for Chelsea. Hey, I'll take that. And with you guys, I just wish we could have gone to Sheffield United away. I've never done it yet. I was looking forward to it and then... This whole lockdown happened and we ain't going back to football for at least another year now. So I'm hoping you lot stay in the league only because I want to be able to do that away. I want to tick that off the list. I haven't done so yet. Yeah, Lewis, you wouldn't have enjoyed that trip to uh, Bramall Lane last yeah. season. <laughs> I will say that I am glad I didn't go last season, but also the same way, little tick. I've seen worse defeats. I'll yeah. be real. Like, well, we've had awful, awful games, like 6-0 City I, was just about to say, yeah. I don't want I don't want to go into too much because I'm sure you've seen a lot worse results than anything I could talk about. <laughs> well, that win against Chelsea at beautiful downtown Bramall Lane was our last victory, which is shocking to say. But we're focusing on Chelsea for this video. So how do you feel the season has been going so far? Um we're getting into a better shape now. I think we start the season, it was okay, even though I think we only won like three in our first nine or something. But we had injuries. We still had Kep attacks, which I still count as something legit based on how good Mendy's been since he's come back. But now we've got Thiago Silva back into the lineup. We've got Hakim Ziyech back in. Pulisic well, was back in, but now he's injured for another three weeks, which is annoying, but we move. But we look, we look a bit better now. There's still a bit of a gelling process but I think we're looking more and more like the finished article. I think the last thing we, we need is a DM and then like we're a proper team that can go and challenge for the title. But even this season, I'd quietly say that we're in a title race only because of how poor this season's been. Like so we, we, We've won three in our first nine and we're still four points off the top. Lewis, do you think there's anything to be said for the us versus them mentality that Lampard probably drilled in last season? You know, you couldn't sign anyone. So it was, uh, OK, we're going to have to go with what we've got, blood some of the youth. It's us versus them mentality is exactly what I mean by that. And then you perhaps got some good results because it was you against the world. And now the checkbook has very much been opened and perhaps the results haven't been quite what you'd have expected. Yes, but I also kind of... Un I thought we'd start the season a bit slowly because we're bringing in five new players. We also had a couple of injuries going into the season and we weren't sure if we were going to have a goalkeeper or not. Mm. So I thought there was going to be an issue trying to assimilate them into the side as well as figure out the best team because we have a massive squad right now. And I still think to an extent Frank Lampard isn't sure what his best team is. But now we've got a now we've got Vernu's acclimatised a bit more. Kai Havertz has looked amazing after the first two games. 
Hakim Ziyech had two man of the matches in his first two starts. Like, I'm really happy with the squad with the way the squad is now. I do think there is a bit more pressure on Frank Lampard, but I think the ma- the biggest issue with Chelsea so far has been trying to figure out the balance in the squad. Like we've been confused about whether to play Pulisic on the left because him and Werner occupy the same spaces. We've been a bit worried about Kai Havertz and Hakim Ziyech occupying the same space as well. Which now we've got Hakim Z- we've got uh, who is it? Kai Havertz playing a bit <laughs> deeper. It it looks like it's worked a bit more, but again, it depends on the opposition. Like. Burnley, that midfield is amazing, but it's because that midfield doesn't really press. Would I trust Kante as a lone DM against a team that presses? Not so sure. I'd probably play Jorginho because I think he's got a better pass, passing range under pressure. But same way, Jorginho isn't the finished article at DM either. I wouldn't take any of them. That's why there's still a bit of a balance. You just got to play to our opponents and just take it a game at a time, I guess. Yeah, Frank Lampard seems to change that Chelsea eleven. Week after week, it's so hard to know what it is actually going to be. Yeah, I mean, the good thing is we finally sorted out our back four. That was like one of the biggest problems. We'd Before the West Brom game, I think, we'd had 41 games with 22 different defensive lineups and we wow. never had anything solid. Now we've got our sorted back four. I think it's going to be Aspi, Aspi, uh Zuma, Silva, and Ben Chilwell maybe switch the right backs, but that depends on how Reese James bleeds into the team. Hell, I would say Reese James now, actually, because of how he played in the last game against Burnley. But we've got our back four sorted. Our attack more or less writes itself. It's just how do you set up the midfield? And that's been the biggest problem over the last three or four weeks. We've had a good attack and a good defence at times, but we've always struggled in the transitional phase, and that's where we've struggled to like really kill off games. I think this midfield would work. I, I can't lie to keep the same team for, for this match because, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think you guys are going to press us too much as well. If I'm wrong, correct me on that. Well, we'll see. You know, away from home, we always seem to play differently. Certainly this season to last season, we're playing completely differently. So I, I wouldn't that's, speculate. That's the thing, though, because you, you have the joint lowest goals scored with Burnley, right? Mm. Yeah, it's, that's why I kind of feel like it's going to be the same sort of game. So I would play Kante because I think he's going to drop deep and give him a bit more space to control the game. But same well, way... I, the, give the us, give us the, you've given us the defence. You've given us the defence. Do you want to just carry on with the likely 11? Um, likely 11. Um, yeah, Kante as the DM. Kai Havertz and Mason. Now, again, this is all depends on if there's any injuries mm-hmm. or anything in the Rens match. But I'd go for that same... I'd go for the same midfield. Help. Uh, do I go for the same attack? Nah, I'd, I'd go Timo Werner, Callum Hudson Odoi, and Takim Ziyech because I'm not going to. Hudson Odoi needs to start having a good game for These us. These names. I mean, you're making me quite uh, quite frightened. There's trepidation in my voice just hearing. I, I wouldn't because this season's a madness, and you lot, your track yeah. record against us recently has been a bit jarring. Yeah, it has been good. Who would you say are the three key players for you? Right now, mm-hmm. um, Hakim Ziyech, just based off the last two games alone, he's got to be up there. He's really in form. In midfield, I'm not sure because against Burnley, all three of them were excellent. Mason Mount, I think, had the most chances and tackles made in the match. Kante had the best success rates and Kai Havertz was just playing the game like he was three seconds ahead of them. I'd be tempted to put all three of them. Hmm. Thiago Silva as well because like age is not a factor with this guy. He's been so brilliant since he's joined us. Even Edward Mendy, just because we don't have Kepper in goal, because that that really is a big enough a big enough impact on the squad as it is. He's catching crosses. Like we've gone, I think we're the most dangerous team aerially in the Premier League this season. Now, do you know how crazy that is to tell yeah. me off for the last two seasons? We were so bad with corners, with crosses, with defending and attacking them, and now we just got better at both of them. So, three danger men: Timo Werner, Hakim Ziyech. Edward Mendy. It's a good thing yeah. Kepper didn't cost you a lot of money, eh? Now, uh, what I about do the... not remind me, bro. We've had <laughs> so many ridiculous. bad. If you look at our top ten most expensive signings, I think about five of them at least are all flops. It's yeah. so mad. I mean, you could also list three amazing players that Chelsea let go, and Kevin De Bruyne, Mo Salah, and Romelu yep. Lukaku. Remind me. The only one I'm calm about is Mo Salah because he was never going to be that player of ours. Lukaku was stupid and short-sighted. De Bruyne was a literal crime against football. I'm always going to be salty about that one. 
I don't blame you. If we'd got rid of even one of those players, we'd never forgive ourselves. And you know, literally, Jefferson... I looked at the first games with him with us, and he was still looked good. Yeah, like his first start against us, he got an assist in eight minutes flat. And I'm looking, we sold this guy because Oscar tracks back. Really? Well, you know, old players can come back to haunt you. Just ask uh, Blades fans about Kyle Walker. Uh, yeah. What about your weakness? <sighs> our weakness was in goal, but like we've had five clean sheets in our last six games. Strong. So, um, maybe Give the transition. Give me an area that, that maybe Sheffield United could exploit. Maybe that's the way that we approach this. I was gonna say crosses, but now that's just gone. Mm. Like maybe the transition. Like that's been our biggest weakness over the last few games. If we play four-two-three-one again, the transition because we are very slow in moving the ball forward and. Our passing range just isn't that good. We keep our head down too much. The Jorginho Kante pivot didn't work. Same with Kante Kovacic, same with Jorginho Kovacic. So if we play 4-2-3-1, two, two, it'll be the transition from defence to attack. But if we play that three in midfield, I'm not sure because the last game and a half that we have done it, it's been literally flawless. So I'm not sure what weakness I would call. You Maybe if you no want to sit deep and hope. <laughs> I, I, this is famous last words, honestly. Yeah. The way this Premier League season's been, it's just screaming Chelsea nil, Sheffield United w- with some jammy cross or something. It's amazing. Every time I've done one of these, the opposition have predicted that we're going to score against them. And everything suggests that that's not going to happen. Uh, you've just done it again. And one other question I want to ask you is, and I've found this fascinating because we've had a different answer to this from everyone we've spoken to, but what comes to mind when you think of Sheffield United? I would say a good defence because I know last season you lot, you didn't score a lot, but you didn't concede a lot either. It was very similar numbers to the both. Spot on. So... I would say a good defense, even with this se- with how poor you've been this season. I wouldn't say your defense is poor. Say the same thing with Burnley. It's about breaking them down. As and as lo- the longer the game goes, if we haven't scored, the more the game I think falls into your hands. Because you lot will be happy to leave with a point. I oh, don't yeah. even think I say that as a disrespect. You'd be happy to take the point. And if you if you come down, you sit you sit everyone behind the ball. We struggle to break you down. I think the longer the game goes, the longer the game will go against us. And that's nothing to discredit you guys. Like I have nothing against that brand of football. We literally won trophies doing it. So fair play. The game is the game. But if I have to think anything with Sheffield United, probably just a solid defence. Are you going to give us a score prediction? I'm going to keep the clean sheet run going. So oh, I'm so, I'm so terrible if you drop points, but 3-0. Wow. Only only because of how good our attack's been going. And if we play 4 3 3, I really think it should be the same as Burnley. That, again, nil. famous last words. Honestly. I'm glad this isn't a pay per view one. That would be painful. Uh, okay. Oh, well, I think pay per view's just been ignored by everyone, honestly. Let's, let's hope it continues that way. And then, of course, eventually disappears. Uh, ideally mm-hmm. we just want to get fans back in the stadiums it'd be great to actually meet you at a game we would love to welcome you to uh, Bramall Lane as well All right, same way with you guys in the bridge yeah hopefully next season uh, we can still be talking to each other as well because I, I really want Sheffield definitely to just start kicking into gear and looking a little bit like the Blades of last season which you've already referenced we were a totally different side yeah I need you lot to stay up because I, like I said I still want to tick that ground off Mm, it's a beautiful ground, one of the classic old stadiums. You will not have a bad day, I absolutely guarantee it. Maybe on the pitch, but certainly not. Off the pitch. Uh, absolutely pleasure speaking to you, uh, Carefree Lewis. I'll give you the full run, uh, Lewis Gabri Selassie. Hey, close. Not enough, I'll give you that. Close. Oh, I want to get that perfect. Uh, a Chelsea fan channel is well worth checking out. Carefree Lewis, thank you so much for joining us. Anytime, bro. Look at that ping from Norwood. Ooh. Makes other teams look no good. Yeah. We've got a team full of leaders. Alan Hill, Chris Wilder, taught us. Right. Yeah, the results on the tour bus. Yeah. No count when it goes, Billy scored us. It's beautiful downtown Bramalane. We are the boys from Shoreham.